three, two, one. Welcome to Eat Your Backyard, my YouTube channel, where I tell you about all kinds of things I'm interested in. You may be interested in... <laughs> hey, you like my glasses? <laughs> They're yeah, my son's. And uh, he won them in a professional surfing contest. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching Eat Your Backyard, my YouTube channel, where I talk about things that may either bore you or interest you, depending on your inclinations. Uh, today, I want to tell you about a plant which I have had a long story history with. And as a matter of fact, it is growing over my neighbor's beautiful fence, which I very much like. It's a great kind of uh, plastic fence, white fence that they installed very nicely, which I'm greatly appreciative of. But they have a bougainvillea plant growing over the top. And this is a beautiful flowering, viney kind of shrub-like plant that grows commonly throughout the south. And uh, this is, I think, the most common type, which is this red variety of it. Um, the flowers have absolutely no scent at all, which is fine. You know, and as a consequence, they really almost attract no bugs at all, in my opinion, which is kind of cool. No pollination insects that I can tell. Uh, but, so that's cool. The other thing is, it's a vigorous grower. It grows extremely quickly, like it's growing over this fence. And I actually love it here because up against this white fence, the uh, striking petals and the, the green leaves are absolutely uh, beautiful and uh, make something very nice to look at. But uh, one of the drawbacks you want to consider, and this is the reason I don't currently grow them in my yard, is that and this is why I'm wearing these gloves, is that they have... Oh, and yeah. protective glasses. Oh boy, and protective glasses. They have spikes that will light you up. And I, oh, they're there. Yeah, you see that? I don't know if you can... I don't see any. You see that against there? Hold on, let me get in. A little spike there. Oh, hold on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That is, actually that's amateur hour <laughs> when it comes to bougainvillea. I've seen bougainvillea spikes that go out three, four times, five times as long as that and are very thick. Like, not as thick as a pencil, but getting there. And very rigid. So, out on these longer kind of shoots that come out, they're not that bad, but I'll tell you, you could easily have spikes on a mature plant like this that will pop a basketball. That will insert into your body as if a knife through warm butter. And uh, it's, you know, it's a bad deal. Now, I dealt with that for years because the house that I moved into here had them planted everywhere so I thought they were incredibly beautiful because they are and I started to trim them and deal with them and I just would get injured and injured and injured no matter how careful you were god by the way these things worth their weight in gold down to your elbow leather gloves lows they're like 15 bucks or something and they will save you from many emergency room visits or at least minimize the damage from something like this spoken via and, uh, you know, I had to deal with them. So I finally, through dealing with the bougainvillea, through dealing with different cactuses that I had, the yucca, the agave, the Spanish bayonet agave, uh, various plants, I realized that every plant that hurts you does not have a place in my yard. And that includes plants with long spikes, and that includes plants which are extremely poisonous. That means they're poisonous to the touch, et cetera. They have poisonous berries, you know, any of that stuff don't want them. And why? Well, because I've got my kids running around. I don't need them brushing up against one and having a bad day or mistakenly eating a red berry off of a plant that's poisonous and dying. So I got rid of all of those things. Many, many yard waste cans full of that stuff. So if it hurts you, it doesn't have a place in my yard. Now granted, you could climb up to the top of my mango tree and jump off and that would hurt you, but you have to try pretty hard. I'm talking about all the stuff that's down at ground level where the little critters can get into. That stuff's all gone. The bougainvillea was one of those, but I'm in a lucky spot where I've got a neighbor who planted one right on the other side of the fence and they keep it well groomed and I get to enjoy the flowers, but yet I don't have to deal with it. Now look at, look at what I planted on this side. This is the beginning of a lame cactus forest. Could be great someday, but these cactus are actually thornless cactus. In this example I'm talking about, I found a type of cactus that um, has no thorns. You know, that's why I can rub my hands on here and be totally fine. That's the thing. You could still enjoy certain varieties, but you just don't have to uh, 
end up having a bad day as a result of it. And these will grow up and be quite nice specimens. So anyway, that's kind of the juxtaposition of what's going on here over time. As I've gotten older, my understanding of plants has evolved and this is where I wound up. So hey, if you like these kinds of videos, don't hesitate to subscribe to my YouTube channel called Eat Your Backyard. If you subscribe, you'll be notified as new videos come out and we can all have a communal internet experience together. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching. Yeah, boys.